Hello, and welcome to another episode of Reading Reddit with Amber. I'm Amber. And I'm on my deathbed. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, so if we look a little sickly, uh, we got our COVID vaccines yesterday, and uh, it was like a mini version of the flu. We're still recovering, so I don't even feel like putting on makeup or anything, so I know I probably look like I'm a ghost or something, but you know, we got it done, so. Yeah, it was rough. It was rough. Yeah, so. But, but it only lasts like 24 hours. Yes. <laughs> but if you haven't gotten your COVID vaccine yet, I definitely recommend uh, being prepared, having some Tylenol on hand, and taking it before you think you need it, because um, the muscle aches were like nothing I've ever felt before, um, and also some Pedialyte and saltines and soups, easy foods. Um, I don't know if you had as much of stomach issues, but I had some nausea and stuff like that. So. I have a little bit of stomach issues, but not much. So it's basically like a mini version of the flu. So be prepared to uh, feel potentially pretty rough for a few days. I know that it varies a lot from person to person, but especially uh, younger people tend to have really strong immune reactions. So our first story today is... Would I be the jerk if I ask a man who participates in our works women in STEM group to let the actual women, or two, present at a meeting instead of him? My women in STEM group is sponsored by the company. We invite both men and women to join. There's a part of the business called AI that is booming over the pandemic and lots of people are wondering about job opportunities in our department. Because of this, Two girls who run the Women in STEM group thought it would be a great idea to have a series of A Day in the Life sessions. The first session covered manufacturing and two girls who work in that group presented their jobs. The session was a big hit, lots of executives joined, and we had over 150 people on the call. And at the end, they sent a survey out asking what people would like to hear next. My group is marketing and had the most interest. Now my group is relatively small. There are six people total and I'm the only girl. So it made sense that the organizers immediately reached out to me to ask if I'd do it, and I said, sure, I'd love to present. Unbeknownst to me, my male, white, roughly 45-year-old boss, who says he participates in our Women in STEM group for 10 years, but I have never seen him at any events, reaches out a few days later to the organizers and volunteered himself to do the presentation. Cue the awkward moment where the organizers reached back out to me and asked if I'd be willing to tag team with my male boss. This is where I may be the jerk, and my husband is saying I would be, but I had already planned to reach out to one of the executive girls who was no longer in my group, but covered it for eight years prior, to tag team with me. I thought it would be a great way for, one, me to network with the successful female, and two, for a successful female to showcase their progression from the group. I want to ask my male boss not to present with me. I talked to my husband and said it was just so odd that my boss, who manages the only female in the group, reached out to present it himself rather than reach out to me and see if I'd be willing. But my husband is saying he's part of the group and he should have just as much of a right to present as I do. Would I be the jerk if I asked him to bug off? The entire purpose in my mind of the Women in STEM group is to boost representation of females in the company. Doesn't a male, presuming he is the best fit to present the topic, defeat the purpose? The series is getting a lot of executive attention. It would be a great place to showcase the females actually working in their space. So, what do you think of that one? I don't think Opie's the jerk here. Yeah, well, you know, the thing is that... She had her own plans and her own idea, and he just kind of went out of his way to undermine what she had in mind. And instead of being, you know, know, instead of asking her what she would like to do, you know, he presumes that he can just come in and present. Right. Well, and this is the problem is like when you are working as an ally, it's important to kind of take a backseat a little bit. Because it seems like the boss only wants to participate in this group when he's front and center. Yeah, well, it seems like he wants to like kind of take the lead and he wants to be seen and stuff like that. But really, it just seems comes across as tacky. Yeah, and so like I think Opie's absolutely right that if the 
goal of this Women in STEM series is to kind of showcase the talent of the women employees, it makes most sense to have the women employees doing the presentations. Yeah, well, and I think it's actually a really great idea to have her network with this person who's, you know, moved up the ladder, so to speak, because that really does showcase, like, the progression, the career progression and whatnot here. And I think that that's probably a little bit better of a idea than having her boss present anyways. Yeah. And again, like this guy, he claims that he's part of this group, I guess, but then he doesn't do any of the, you know, activities until it's, oh, I want to be in the limelight. Yeah, it's pretty much like, unless I'm front and center, then I'm not really there. And that's, I think, an issue. You should be there on the sidelines and not just when you're in the spotlight. And we actually have some experience with this because you used to help me a lot with my women's stuff on campus and like you made it clear not to put yourself in the spotlight Mm -hmm. because you didn't really feel like it was your place and i feel like anytime you know you're working as an ally to a group like it's important to let the people in that group that you're not a part of um be the ones kind of calling the shots so i think it's perfectly fair for her to want to go with her original plan and to tell her boss that maybe this isn't the place for you to take the lead. Our next letter is titled, Am I a Jerk for Improvising My Scene in a Play? So, this situation played out a couple of days ago, and I'm still dealing with the aftermath. A buddy of mine put on a small play in production as part of a course that he was taking at a community college. I'm not in the class, but he asked me to play a pretty small role with a couple of lines in one scene. He wrote the play, and I honestly thought it was pretty good. And as someone who writes in my own spare time, I had a lot of story suggestions for him. In particular, I wanted to expand the role of the character I was playing and add some more dialogue to my scene. Not because I wanted to steal the spotlight, but genuinely felt it would improve the play. No, not at all. (laughs) Definitely not hogging the spotlight. My friend was completely not receptive to additions that I was proposing, and he was pretty dismissive when I first voiced my opinions. I will admit this annoyed me a bit, and perhaps it made me feel more comfortable taking it upon myself to insert some improvisions into my scene. I essentially went ahead with the expanded monologue I had written as best as I could remember, which caused my scene to go on three or four minutes longer than planned. However, I very naturally transitioned back into the written material, and every other actor involved seemed to understand what I was doing and flow really well with it. The audience seemed to like it also. Essentially, the only person who was upset was my friend, who yelled at me afterwards and basically tried to claim I was disrespecting his vision. I tried to explain that my intention was to enhance the scene not detract from what he had written, and I also explained that everyone else seemed to like what I did. He was not having any of it, and pretty much hasn't spoken to me since. I feel like he's being extremely unreasonable, and I think that the conflict would have been avoided in the first place if he had considered my suggestions to begin with, if he had given me a legitimate reason why, as he didn't like my proposal absolutely would not have gone through with it. Yeah, I'm going to say OP is being a jerk here. Like, Yeah, well, the thing is, like, he has his own vision. And in this particular case, you know, the person who wrote the story, they wanted to exercise this with their own vision. And, like, I think it was perfectly legitimate for them to go ahead and offer that change but when you know their friend said no i would rather not do it that way and then they went ahead and did it anyways it just it seems in really poor taste why bother even asking at that point in time right well and that's the thing is like this is something that the friend is doing for school for a course grade this is not op's chance to shine like he can write his own plays if he wants to yeah. 
But this is his friend's, uh, you know, thing. And we don't know what the um, requirements of the project were. Yeah, if there was yeah. a time limit. Yeah, that's my big thing that I was going to mention was the time limit. Like, what happens if this had to be over, you know, inside of 15 minutes? And, you know, adding another four minutes onto it, you know, actually pushed out the uh, uh, length that they were allowed to run. Like, I've had presentations in classes where... If you go over the amount of time, they'll actually dock you points. Yeah. Because other people need to present as well. So, you know, you might go from like an A grade to a B grade just because you went over by even a few seconds. You know, you just got to have those things timed and, you know, put them out in a timely manner. I also feel really bad for the other actors in the scene. Um, you know, when I was in high school, I did a lot of play stuff and, you know, a lot of theater stuff. And you require, you rely on um, your knowledge of what the other actors, because you have to know not only your own lines, but their yeah. lines as well. Yeah. So if someone had started ad-libbing, like, I would have been freaking out. Like, I once was in a class where um, the person I was uh, doing the scene with he forgot his lines and so you could you could bring a copy of the script with you um and you'd like lose a letter grade and he decided to do that but the copy of the script he had didn't have the last page and so he was like uh trying like he had no idea what he was supposed to say and so like trying to bring that back was like a nightmare so like even if this guy did transition to the right cue line like I imagine that the other actors were probably like, oh my gosh, what is going on here? Well, and also, this is a community college play here. It's not Broadway. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, pick and choose your battles. This is like, of the things to pick and choose, this is probably not the hill to die on. Right, well, and he should just feel flattered that his friend invited him to be here in the first place. Yeah. You know, but like... You don't just get to take over your friend's production and make it your own. Like, yeah. If you want to take this class, go ahead and take this class and write your whole own play. Yeah, exactly. Our last story today was suggested by someone in the comments. YouTube actually ate the comments, so I couldn't respond to it. But I did happen to see the title of the story, so I found it. Uh, so thank you for the suggestion. And uh, I apologize for not responding. Last I checked, YouTube had just like eaten the comment. I couldn't find it anywhere. So, uh, but it's a really an interesting story. So I wanted to cover it. So am I the jerk for kicking my three sisters out of my wedding after they came with their kids? My wife and I get married two weeks ago. We wanted a child-free wedding. So we've let everyone know my family slash in-laws slash friends and relatives. And everyone was okay with it except for my family. I have three sisters, all with kids from two to 10. My mom said it was illogical not to allow kids since one, this never happened in the family, and two, my sisters live towns away so the kids can't be left alone. After a lot of arguing and others getting involved, I stood my ground and they agreed not to bring kids. At the wedding, no one brought kids. My parents and aunts were already there but then I saw my two sisters arriving with their kids. I immediately went to ask what's the deal. They began arguing with me when I said I won't be letting them in with the kids. I saw my older sister came with her kids in the car. I was angry. I asked why they decided to go against the rule and bring kids. My mom started yelling at me when I told my sisters they weren't allowed in with kids. Everyone was yelling at me. I had to get the security involved to make them leave. My parents and aunt left shortly after. They were so angry at me. I got nasty texts later and my cousin posted about my lousy wedding on Facebook. Days later, I've gathered the family and explained that what they did was wrong. I asked if I allowed my sisters with their kids, what message does that send to my in-laws and friends who wanted to bring kids but they couldn't? My sisters argued with me, and it turned out my mom told them to bring their kids and should deal with me later. I told them they could have arranged for a babysitter, but my mom said they wanted to celebrate as a whole family. Said that I ruined my own wedding by making a scene. And everyone will always remember my wedding as a disaster because of mine and my wife's child-free bull. They said the only way to fix it is to have another wedding slash party and include everyone, especially kids. I called them unreasonable. 
I asked my mom where she got the nerve to even demand that. They blamed my wife and claimed it was deliberate. I left. They started talking to my wife, trying to convince her that they don't approve of what happened and that they're giving us the chance to fix the situation, otherwise the relationship is damaged. This caused me a headache and I don't think what I did was wrong. I just wanted them to have some respect for my wife and her family. Well, what do you think of this one? I, I don't think Opie's a jerk here. I mean, he had a very clear policy. No kids, period. He explained it beforehand. And his mom and sisters just went and undermined him. Yeah, well, that's the thing that I don't understand. It's like, why you would think that it was okay to go ahead and basically say, if someone says, don't bring kids, and then be like, oh, well, I'll deal with them later. So don't worry, bring your kids. We want to celebrate as a family. And like, I do understand wanting to bring kids, but a lot of times kids are just bored at weddings anyways. Right, exactly. Like, unless the kids have a part in the wedding, they're probably going to be bored out of their mind. Mm -hmm. Even if they do, like once they've done their little thing, like they don't want to be there anymore. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I just don't know. This doesn't seem like it was good for anyone. You know, the sisters, they got kicked out of the wedding. The mom just ended up leaving in a huff. And, I mean, again, like, then that's not a good way to do a, have a wedding start off, you know? Exactly. So, I certainly feel that OP uh, was in the right here. I don't really feel like they made anything that was unreasonable. They gave them plenty of... It wasn't like... This was like last minute and they're like, right. oh, hey, by the way, don't bring kids. Exactly. It was it was made very clear beforehand that no kids were going to be allowed at the wedding. And it only made sense to stick with this because, as they said, like, what about everyone else who hadn't brought their kids? Yeah. Like, then they would feel like they were being treated differently. Yeah. And like, why did these people get to bring their kids when we didn't? Yeah. Um, I think that's, you know, if you're having a wedding and you're having like deciding whether to have kids i think generally all kids or no kids is the best policy so you don't run into situations yeah. well where would they even sit because a lot of times weddings will have planned out seating so like and they'll have the correct number of chairs put out and they're not going to have a dinner plate or anything like that you know so it just seems like all bad planning all around for this yeah so I don't think OP was a jerk here. I think it's perfectly... They made their expectations very clear, and I think the mom was completely in the wrong to try and undermine that. Yeah. And I definitely think they should not go ahead and, like, cave to the mom's suggestion because she just wants to get her way and prove that she was right. Yeah, And yeah. so, like, definitely don't have a uh, kid-friendly do-over wedding for them because that's what the mom wants. Yeah. All right. Those are all the stories I have for you for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, consider giving it a like or letting me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye. <laughs>